Hey everyone, welcome back to some more Let's Play Lobotomy Corporation. In the last episode, we failed <laughs> day 36. Or rather, we didn't have to, but after I sent Robert Baron to her death, because I stupidly assigned attachment work for her after she had seen crumbling armor some some 20 videos ago. <laughs> I said, oh, come on, Tim. You should just retry the day. We witnessed some really amazing animated deaths from some people. We got to see the fairies eat somebody. We got to see the uh, portrait of the world kill someone. And we got to watch someone else die from the researcher's notes. That was a lot of fun. But we are redoing day 36. We're going to try to get that Dusk event and do the Dusk event as well. Let's go ahead and get started. Oh, and as long as I'm talking, I suppose, I could also mention that we also figured out everything there was to know about the new WoW abnormality that we were working with. It's tricky. It's very tricky. <laughs> we have to pay attention to a lot of things when working with this one. Now, of course, we lost all that information because we have reset to try this day again, but I still remember it all. So, uh, all right, well, let's just do it. I don't see any reason for us to do any more prep. Uh, we've already seen our people in the beginning of the last episode. Uh, we talked about what the plan was going forward already as well. So let's just, let's just do it. Begin management and we'll see if we can manage this day without losing somebody this time. And I'll go on silent again, so I will talk to you guys because I find it easier for me to concentrate when I am doing that. So, uh, I'll be back in a second or two to talk to you guys. <laughs> and of course I cut the recording. Alright, let's not do that, Tim. Ha, ah, I remember that. <laughs> Instinctively, I hit the stop recording button when I think I'm signing out. And, uh, well, I did it right there. Hey everyone, alright. I'm watching this with you guys now, and it's been a week since I've recorded this part. This also means I haven't played the game in a week, because I don't have the next part recorded. Uh, I remember this day quite well, though, and I won't say why I do, because I think it'll be fun for all of us to see it together. Uh, in any case, as you can see already, I'm going ahead and assigning people to be outside the abnormalities I intend for them to work with this day. And so, off they go. And while that's happening, I guess I can read some of your comments? I'm thinking what I'm going to do for this playlist from now on is I will do a summary of, I think, if you guys ask me any questions, I will try to answer them or make statements about what you have said rather than read your comments word for word. Because I'm also trying to watch what's happening on screen and glancing over to read the comments and then up at the screen can probably be a little distracting. And so I want to focus on the screen more than the comment. With the exception of Adorkable's comments, whenever Adorkable leaves something indicating what happened during the day to her, I will absolutely read. <laughs> I read that on screen. The journal entries are fantastic. So, Destruction 42K uh, was curious if I would update my chart, the chart, with any new information here. But uh, unfortunately, Destruction, my, the, the quirk board is filled. And if we're going to put an extra three abnormalities on it for the uh, records team and extraction team, there will be no room for anything else on that board. And I won't have the room in the house for another... Uh, Chalkboard. <laughs> I just, I just won't. And so, uh, no. Unfortunately, there won't be anything else there. I'll just, I'll just have to do my best to remember what these abnormalities are capable of doing if they break out. I did want to assemble teams and keep track of who needs to be where when I fight certain abnormalities. But at this moment, I'm still tracking who is working with individual ones in order to improve their stats and based around what armor they're wearing. Uh, you mentioned that. There are elves that are easy to work with, but hard to contain. And the opposite, elves that are hard to contain, but easy to work with. And apparently censored is the first. We can work, it's difficult to work with, but easy to put back in its containment unit. And I think I agree with that, although we've only fought it once. Uh, and we lost that fight mostly because I, w I didn't understand what was happening. <laughs> 
Now that I, I'm aware that you cannot let censored create any additional censors, a uh, censored, a uh, uh, in that hallway, I will go out of my way to purge the disciplinary team of clerks if things look like they're going wrong. And if censored gets out, we could also just call in the rabbit team from what you have hinted at, that they will be able to suppress it. So we might give that a go. Rabbit team, this Russian 42k mentioned, is like some sort of... When they show up, they kill everything in the department that you have assigned them to. So, uh, including your own agents and any clerks. So it sounds like it's indeed an emergency button. It's, oh crap, things have gone really wrong here. I need a team, I need rabbit team in here to clean this mess up. Uh, what else is there that you said really quick? You asked if I would mind if you describe some alts, uh, ones that we don't get normally. Uh, I don't quite know how we don't get an alf normally. <laughs> this makes me a little concerned. Uh, to my knowledge, we get abnormalities through the containment units. Uh, I do not want any hints, but I am willing to read if how we get other abnormalities in our department beyond picking them from a containment unit. That's I'm curious about that. Don't don't tell me what what does it. I want no hints about it. But if it is something that does occur, it would be interesting to know. I just want to know, like, oh, that's interesting. I never would have guessed that would be the case. I'm trying to think of how that would happen. I can't think of how that would happen. Is there, like, some special quest that we can unlock that gives us a button that we can press to get, like, a very specific alf? Oh, I don't know. All right, anyway. Uh, let's think here. You, you did talk a little bit about uh, the later days in the game destruction, but I, I just skipped I, I skipped those. I don't want to know what happens on any particular day, uh, especially the end days. I want to go into those completely blind. Uh, it'll be funner for me, and if we lose during them, so be it. Then then that then that will be the end uh, of our run then. You know, it's still like the game. Even if it defeats me in the end, I, I still like this game. It's been a lot of fun for me to play it. The only, the only mechanic I'm really dreading is the removal of the pause mechanic. Uh, I'm so hoping that we manage to avoid whatever abnormalities cause that to occur. We'll still try the game, obviously, even if that does happen, but... I'm, I can tell you, I'm probably not going to win. Uh, I'm probably never defeating those days or whatever events, or I'm not going to be able to successfully work with those abnormalities, and it's going to be game over uh, for us when that happens. But we'll see how far we get. You mentioned backup characters. So, I'm I'm not getting backup characters for the game. Like, uh, when someone dies, uh, the exception to that has been Z-Jed. Everyone else who dies is dying, and if Z-Jed dies, he's dead for real and finally as well. That will be the end of it. Um, I find it's more impactful for all of us if I don't just create Windwater Mark V, for example, when he's died uh, four times in a row. If, I'm, if I don't want to lose somebody, I'll have to retry the day or reset the memory repository. And if we can't do that, which is the impression I got from day four, uh, 46 onward, and we're stuck with whatever whatever happened during those days, we just have to deal with it, and we'll see how far we can get. Hopefully we can still spend our LOB points to recreate new people, though, uh, going forward. As for benching people, uh, I don't want to bench anybody either to hire new people. I should be doing that, and if I wasn't recording the game, I would do that. But I've named all these people after various viewers, of mine, or people who left comments on my, uh, on my Lobotomy Corporation videos. And so, I feel like a traitor if I was to bench them. We're all getting to the end together, or we're all failing this together, is my attitude toward it. If I wasn't recording this, yes, uh, I would be benching people and hiring new people to work with the abnormalities to take advantage of the stat growths. And so I would have more tier 5 uh, people waiting in the wings should I lose a bunch of people. I am getting the impression that I should be trying to do that, but again, that's that's not what's going to happen for this uh, for this corporation. And I'm going to wait to hire more people until we can complete Gabora's quest, for the most part, as we get more gear, 
is when I will begin hiring more people to outfit them appropriately. Uh, what else is there? You mentioned a little bit about Lobotomy Corporation. So I have Lobotomy Corporation. I own it. I've been waiting till we get a little farther in this before I fired up and play it. I'd, I'll probably start playing it, I guess, when we hit day, uh, day 41. I feel like I could probably start playing the game then. Maybe I shouldn't, though. It depends upon how much story is immediately exposed to me playing that game. As to what happens here in the Bodby Corporation. I've been so lucky that the vast majority of this has been blind to me. I am remember everyone that I do know all about Magical Girl. I know about the Queen of Hatred. She is the one abnormality I know everything about because I was I really love the idea of her, and I had seen some memes involving her some time ago. Is there any other abnormalities that I have seen? Or I know about, now that I'm thinking about it. I think there is another one for this game that I know about. There's some sort of button. Oh, there, there's two more I know about. There is two more I know about. There's a button. And if you, I think it's this game. And if you press that button, uh, the game crashes, if I recall correctly. And it's supposed to do that. It's, it's, it's got some, uh, is it, is it called Don't Press Me? The button might be called Don't Press Me. And if you interact, if you have someone go in the containment unit to press the button, the game, I think, immediately dies, if I recall correctly. It's it's something like that, because I remember, I remember reading a bit about this game many years ago, and the button was something that a lot of people, they didn't like their game uh, crashing on them, and so they were being warned about it. I think that's what happens with it. I, all I know is that you, nev you don't press it. No matter what, you never press the button. And there's another abnormality called... I think it's Bald is Awesome. And if you send anyone in to work with it who is bald, it's like a 100% success chance. And if anyone you send in there is not bald, it's like a 0% success chance. And I think the person who isn't bald becomes bald after they work with the abnormality. Are there any others I know about? No, I can't think of any. I might have seen one or two pictures of others, but I can't remember them off the top of my head. I will let you guys know if I have seen one before. But so far, uh, all of these have been new for me. What else is there? Alexander. Oh, hold on. Uh, we are we are saying someone in for kind of well cheers. And you go, Jason. We are clearing the debuff, potential debuff, that we had gotten from the Little Prince. And now we have Clowns. And this is a big mistake. I really should not be sending people to work with abnormalities if clowns are not in the hallway. I really should deal with the ordeals, if possible, before sending people in to their containment units. Because if the clowns do manage to steal the PE boxes from one containment unit, they will go to another and attempt to take them as well. And it would be such a pain in the butt to have to re-earn like 300 PE boxes on Scarecrow Searching for Wisdom or Warm Hard Woodsman. That is a lot of days to get those back. Oh, I'm sorry. Clowns haven't spawned yet. That was just the alarms. Okay, I see that clowns are now coming up. Okay, so Alexander has uh, is mentioning why he doesn't like the crumbling armor buff. Yeah, when you might remember early on in the series when when I saw that it actually did have a gift, and I learned that the gift could kill people who were do that was a misclick, who were doing attachment work, uh, I immediately wanted to get rid of it. I didn't want the combat buff. I was more interested in just having people do it, increase their temperance. But now I actually do like the crumbling armor buff. Uh, I have people who will never do work at all with any abnormality any longer. Or rather, not attachment work at least, like Dia. 
never need to put her into a containment unit to do work with uh, attachment. We have other people who can do that. And so I'm giving the crumbling armor buff to a handful of people who I don't intend to do that work with. It was a huge mistake for me to send Robber Baron into the King of Greed. I had a moment uh, of lapse of judgment, and I forgot she had it, and there was no reason for me to send her in there. I think, what's Robert Baron's, um... Robert Baron, what is your... You, she even has over 100 stat in Temperance, according to my little cards. So, she wasn't even going to benefit from doing any work with King of Greed. I should have had David C. do that work instead. That was really dumb on my part. But otherwise, yeah, I, I, I can understand why you don't like uh, crumbling armor. Because um, having that hanging over your head, literally, because it looks like the sword chopped her head off. Having that over your head is such a dreadful thing to happen. And if it kills someone who's super high level, and I, I get the impression you're on like the last days... Man, you really don't want to lose someone to that. It's just a simple lapse in judgment. That is awful. The Social 42K has also mentioned what I was thinking as well with, with coming armor. Get people's stats leveled up first before you do it. That's actually why I gave it to Robert Baron. She already had such a high temperance that I didn't feel like giving her the buff just made sense. I wouldn't mind having someone who is a white range damage dealer gaining an increased attack speed. And so that was why I gave her that buff. It's also interesting that as long as I don't assign that person to do more... It looks like repression and or attachment work, that the buff won't get any worse than tier 1, right? Because I gave it to Lennon Soul Hacker, I think, has it now. And as long as... And she has only the increased stats plus 10 to attack and movement speed, not the plus 20, but she's not suffering any additional hit point loss. Uh, I got one more comment here, I thought. Or maybe I didn't. I did not! Alright, so that was all the comments I got on the last video. Alright, so now I can focus on this with you guys. So... We're killing clerks. I need to get used to killing clerks. I probably should be using a great deal, a great many more bullets to do so. My strategy for clerks generally is if I see two clerks walking close to each other, use a bullet on them. Get rid of two with one bullet if possible. Prefer to kill clerks who are in the central command team because I don't care about an extra timer on our alarm. People are waiting outside their abnormalities to work with them. I don't I don't have to worry about not getting someone over there to them, or generally I won't have to worry about that. And since the Asaya layer is now disabled, for having any meltdowns in any of these uh, departments, it's even easier for me. And it looks like the more departments that we get... Uh, the more departments that have their meltdowns... Uh, the course... If you do a course suppression, it looks like it removes the meltdowns for that department. If that is the case for the central command team and every single department, then it also looks like the amount of alarms that go off is greatly reduced. And here comes Scarecrow searching for wisdom, so we're going to go ahead and beat this thing down. Oh, clerk, I'm so sorry, but I'd rather, yep, I'd rather erase from existence than have you get your brain sucked out. Because we all, we've also learned that Scarecrow searching for wisdom... Uh, it doesn't take any damage while it's in that animation. So, yeah, so I'm going to kill Central Command Team people first. Followed by the Training Team. Followed by... Oh, man. After that, it's a tie between the Disciplinary and Safety Team. I generally don't really want to kill the Welfare Team clerks. Because, well... I like the extra bullets that they give us. We get one extra bullet per rank of the welfare team. They should probably be the last group I kill. Oh, I'm, I can't remember who did work with it and what work they did with it. If ever this is the case... From now on, for the Little Prince, 
I will send whoever works with it next will absolutely have to do insight work. And if I can find out who did work with it prior, that person needs to go to another containment unit. So my plan is the moment someone leaves the Little Prince, they go someplace else to work with another abnormality to counter the time they, they worked with the Little Prince. I think that's the way that works. We actually don't need to work with the Little Prince all that often. We'll probably earn all its armor in the next day that we are able to... Uh, the next day forward, assuming that in this video we haven't retried or reset memory repository. Alright, time to save. I like to stay home, and I think I'm on the way to get uh, the kiss on my cheek this time. Let's do it. I'm always torn between making it thematic with a 71% chance of getting doing the insight, but we really should have just done the insight work. Now, because we we tried this day, Spider Bud is back up to her 999 PE boxes rather than having lost 300 PE boxes to the clowns. That is just an awful amount to lose the clowns outside that door for too long. We also learned that the monk staff is it's not a very good weapon. I still am thinking of installing that one mod that I believe improves the damage it deals, since it doesn't, since justice doesn't improve the speed at which you swing it. Uh, I don't know what you're doing there, little clown. We can change anything that doesn't have any PE boxes, and you can't release it. Um, you're gonna die. He's about to shoot. We'll go ahead and just execute you. Um, when it comes to the the clown dawn, the clown dawn, the orange dawn. It's difficult for me to decide if I want to kill the clerks who are going to be helping with execution bullets because they're going to die when the clown explodes. Or do I have them help me deal with the clowns because they also can do enough damage to them to kill them. Peiji has hit points and armor which do not lend themselves to her helping in that battle. You two don't either, but thankfully you walked away immediately. Wow, the AoE on that clown actually is surprisingly large. It killed one of those clerks. Do a scarf, yep, gotta send you back up for more censored work. Might as well wind backwards clock again. Ooh, am I speaking? Uh-oh, yes I am. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Checking on my recording software occasionally to make sure everything's coming out okay. <laughs> Seeing the clerks all take various amounts of damage, but only one of them dies. Ooh, hold on, I'm about to have the most awesome thing ever. You did get to see our amazing smiles because we're both wearing masks. <laughs> but still, you get to see how happy they looked. That's amazing. I, I'll never get tired of watching that happen. Strathus so Colto, you're probably next for that. Although, I kind of would rather you have the teardrop. But I don't think we're going to... I don't think we'll be lucky enough to get that one. The Soul Queen's gift is so useful. It's a 100% it's a chance to get it as well. You just have to risk someone going insane. And possibly, I guess, not getting them out, though we've always managed to do that successfully so far. That could be another thing we add to the list of things to watch, if we want to retry the day, is what happens if you fail to get the person out of the Snow Queen's containment unit. I've been assuming that you need a good or normal work result for that to occur, but maybe maybe it will always you'll always get that person out, no matter what, just as long as that per the other person doesn't go insane after completing the work in there.
If I can't remember, yep, yeah, if I can't remember, then it has to be insight work. Well, we, we, Tim, you, you ran out of things to talk about. <laughs> All right, so what's going on here? So, uh, you know what doesn't help any? I'm so tired, everyone. Today is January 23rd, 2022, and I did not sleep well last night, and I didn't, and I, my body still woke me up at like 7.30 this morning. It was awful. I got like five and a half hours of sleep, and I'm tired, and it's 4.30 in the afternoon, and I've been awake since, since 7.30. But I know I'm not going to fall asleep until it's dark outside. So I got another hour. Man. I figured, you know what? I might as well get the voice recorded for this. Let's do it. I can tough it out until uh, until this portion of the video is done. However long that will be. Of course, you guys have the advantage. You can see how long the video has been playing for. You know, I'll talk about some random stuff while, while we're waiting around here. It's funny people to do work with abnormalities. Not much else is happening. So, I wish there was a way to hide how much longer the video had left to, uh, to finish. Uh, there is, of course, if you full screen it here on YouTube. But it's, it's one of the reasons why, for example, I don't like watching competitive uh, esports on, on YouTube or have you. Because there's a, there's a timer on it. And so I can guess pretty adequately on a best two out of three what the result was based on the length of time that the video was uh, scheduled for. It'd be neat if there was a way to somehow hide that all that information when I, w when I was looking for a video. Yes! Three of them gone with one bullet. Well done. We're also kind of lucky that Oodaloop was the one who got the reflection, now that I think about it, because she's wearing armor that is designed to help her deal with black damage. And I see the Heart of Aspiration in there. Dia, you gotta go get that. Off you go. Mm, I've been yawning a lot. Let's think. So, starting over for day one. I I was thinking about it as I've mentioned earlier, but in the end, it's it's not going to be something I'm going to record. You might remember that when I started playing this game, it was around October, I think, is when I started. It might have been November, but I think it was October. And I was under the impression the game was less lengthy than it turned out to be. I like that it's as long as it is, but I wasn't intending on this being the game that I was going to play uh, for like 50 videos and it totally is it turns out in the end going to be at least 50 videos long it, or so it seems based upon how many times we might have to retry or reset the memory repository but no I, I'm not going to 100% this th this game we'll go we'll get whatever ending we can earn and that will that will do it for us I think Angela will just have to live <laughs> just have to live <laughs> <laughs> with being a uh, an AI instead of the real girl she wants to be, I'm never gonna stop saying that. It's it's my, I, I that's my guess. I guessed that in the first video here, and that's my guess as to what Angela wants, and that's why she's gonna kill us. She's gonna kill us because she wants to be a real girl. We finally have enough PE boxes generated at the end of the last day. She's going to have enough to buy power the city for forever or make herself a real girl. And she's going to choose real girl is what she's going to do. I bet you that's what's going to happen. I don't even know why she wants it so badly. It's, it's, it's not going to help her. She, she's better off being an AI. Oh, actually, is that true? AIs, I got the impression AIs are banned. Well, that can't be the case because we work with other corporations, Tim. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, yeah, that's not that's not the case. They're not banned. You're thinking of a. Uh... Actually, there is Blade Runner. They weren't banned either. AIs were allowed in that world. Mass Effect. They're allowed there. Is that true? What am I? Th There's a game I'm thinking of, but I can't think of what the game's called now. It's not the Jupiter Instant. AI was around in that game, too. Oh, well. 
I can't, I can't think of it. <laughs> right, uh, Tiras. Impression for you. I'm probably gonna have to actually write on a piece of paper, like the capital, well, the capital, not the capital letter, but I'm gonna have to make a note as to what work was done on Little Prince. Because I, I just know at one point I'm going to mess it up. Oh, wow. We are so, so lucky that we didn't have the Little Prince as one of our early on abnormalities when we did Malkoth's core suppression. Because it would have been a random work assignment whenever we stepped into that containment unit. Which means it is far more... Well, oh no, only once, Tim. Is that right? Only once per meltdown level, is what you were told. You have to be really, really careful working with it, though. Hmm. No, the portrait for the little prince doesn't look doesn't look a whole lot like what it looks like in the containment unit. I noticed that a few of the creatures in the containment unit look completely different when they decide to walk out of it than when they're actually standing still inside of it. Yeah, it looks cute. Looks like a cute creature there. A cute mushroom hugging its knees, but that's not at all what it looks like inside the containment unit. It looks absolutely terrifying. I think... Is that Trivis or is that Helmet Hair is working with Night of Despair today? Cool pull off meltdown. No problem we'll handle it. We have a red noon showing up. I am fully expecting to get a second clown monster today. You'll note, by the way, I'm not touching the Luminous Bracelet whenever it goes on uh, an alarm. I just, I, I can't risk it because I don't, if I somehow lose a hit point on that person, I'm, or, or even a sanity point, I'm really nervous about that person just immediately uh, dying if I was to return the bracelet. So I'm just never going to touch that one. We'll only take it out when we're finally ready to, to tank censored. We can, though, grab the research notes and then send David C. to work with the King of Greed. Oh, Mushroom Drug went out cool now. Well, that well, that works out well for us. This means that we can send two people in to work with it, this uh, meltdown level, or danger level, whatever it's called. Yep, up you go. Work with the King of Greed. Then we can put the research notes back. Yeah, yesterday with Robert Baron, I probably should have just... Well, no, I shouldn't have. I thought everything was going fine. If I was nervous about her doing any other work with the abnormality and possessing the research notes, like the fact that I couldn't return them because I wanted to practice against whatever Dusk was going to show up in the future, I just had her work with something else instead, like Spider Bud on Instinct, and then returned the research notes after that. And everyone, I, I am too tired. I can't keep recording. Uh, I'll be right back. Hey everyone, All right, I'm back. Uh, I'm sorry for the super awkwardness that might have occurred right here with this cut. I was I was too tired. <laughs> I was too tired to keep to keep recording yesterday. I I had like five and a half hours of sleep, and there used to be a time when I was much younger when that wouldn't bother me. And but that's no longer the case. Uh, I struggle to keep on my feet uh, with less than less than seven, and. Oh my goodness. Uh, I still can't fall asleep, though, until the sun goes back down. So, uh, once 5 o'clock hit, 5.30 hit yesterday, that was it. Uh, punched the clock, stopped recording, went to bed. Fell asleep at 7, woke up this morning at 6. <laughs> A fantastic 11 hours worth of sleep. And now, I can pay attention to what's actually going on with you guys for the rest of the time. And I am good and well-rested. And I am noticing 
that at the moment, Lewis Scarf has a 50% success rate with Censored, and if it continues to be 50%, it could possibly be less than 50%. And if Censored is less than 50% successful, Censored escapes. I think... No! No, he doesn't escape Tim. The Quilpoth counter lowers by one. The Kupaloth counter lowers by one. Okay. Well, I... Looking at the amount of failures he was getting, I fully expected sensors to escape. And so, I am moving everyone down there in preparation. Like, all, everyone who's level 5, everyone who's got decent gear to fight him, is heading down there to do exactly that. Because I'm expecting him to break out. We then also need to kill every single clerk on the disciplinary team. All of them have to die. Because we cannot allow censored, and it's normal work results, so we're okay. I, I'm double checking. Uh, oh, 50% is a failure actually with censored. You need to be slightly over that. 16 PE boxes is a. 17 PE boxes is a. No, 16 is a failure. 17 is a success. So we got 19. So we got uh, 17, 18, 19. Three over what we needed. Okay. All right. <laughs> Back down to. Yellow alert. No longer need to be on red alert. Everyone can, can go back to what they were doing. Situation fine. I think that was health I sent Lewis Scarf into to work with, which was a 70% chance of success. It was slightly under. That's a good reminder that just because something says 70%, it's no reason not to go and pay attention to it, because you might get less than that. We generally have been benefiting from that in the opposite direction. It's been, it's been more positive for us than negative with the chances of success. But it's also why I'm nervous to send people in to do work with Can of Well Cheers. Because a 70% chance of success, and if you get 50, you have the bad drink. And we still don't know what the bad drink does to someone. Maybe that should be something else we, we try to do. Uh, if something goes bad for us during the day. Alright, so... Destruction 42 k asked me a question on the last video that I thought would be fun to talk about. He asked, what is my decision-making process when recording a game versus playing it off-screen versus watching it being played instead? And so, the first thing I think of when it comes to recording and uploading a game is, do I like this game? And will others like it as well? Like, the most important thing for any game is do you like it or not? Uh, I tend to think that my videos are more enjoyable to watch if I'm finding the game enjoyable to play. On that note, I tend to like turn-based strategies, FPSs, and RPG games the most, so those are what make it to my channel for the most part. Although I do occasionally have a few odds and ends. Uh, there's more to it though than if I like it, it gets uploaded. Uh, the viewers, you guys, I have to think that you guys might like it as well. Or at least that's my stance now. Uh, originally my stance was, it just needs to be Tim that likes it. Uh, because when I first started uploading videos to my channel, that was the only thing I concerned myself with. This would be back in 2007, 2008 or so. I viewed YouTube as a place where I could upload Let's Plays, and I could watch them much later on, like years later, when I, when I wasn't playing that game anymore. I didn't have a computer able to run it. Well... Lo and behold, we have DOSBox, we have good old games, and we have ways to play these old games any longer, so losing the ability to play them is not a concern. But watching myself play my old games uh, was something I really wanted to do. And we'll talk about this and that right now. So I see one of them. There's our anatomy of skin. Everyone's got to go up there to fight it. And... We had this one yesterday. Yes, we had this one in the last video that we had done. And we had seen that we only get one of these. Even though we have the records team unlocked and everything on the bin -a -labor layer uh, fully developed. So, Red Noon is by far and large the easiest one to handle. Assuming that you have people ready to handle the clowns as soon as they spawn. And good for me. Look at me turning it around the, the tank, uh, for Heisel to tank it. Because he's wearing the, the proper armor for that. Good job, team. 
And now everyone runs to different hallways to guard against the appearance of the clowns. I don't see them anywhere. Oh, there they are. But they just vanished. Looks like one's hanging out in this hallway. He will regret choosing this hallway to plunder PE boxes from. Two other ones vanished somewhere else. Where are they? Oh, and Windwater has the fairy crystal. Uh, perfect. That's what I, that's what I want him to get up there. Uh, crap. Well, now I don't know what, what to do with them. Uh, I'm guessing it, maybe we can get a pair of glasses with them or something for his head. Oh, what's happening down here? Backwards clock is fully wound. I'm looking for the clowns. It looked like the people by the disciplinary team are charging one. Oh, nope, they are not, though. I really want to find them. Where are they? Did I miss them someplace? I did not. Oh, there they are. All right, so, yep. We should definitely send two more people up there to deal with those clowns, and it should be no issues. They shouldn't... Oh, I'm going to kill the clerks, apparently. My belief is probably that they will die anyway when these clowns detonate, and we have all these bullets. Why not use them? In truth, though, I sh should probably have had their help for this, given that we have yet to see Clouded Monk's Cool Plot counter decrease even once. Go, go, go. Smash it. And since we now know where all the clowns are, we can have people go ahead and do work. It's three clowns per red noon creature that you killed. Because when we have the red dusk, both of those creatures spawn a red noon that then spawn three clowns. I really feel like there should be a second noon. At least one more. <laughs> Well done, Tim. Well done. Although, to be fair, that is an easy one. As long as you have everyone ready to, to deal with it. Alright, so we're back to the little prince. And back to my decision-making process. Alright, so... Another thing that goes through my mind... Is... How well-known is the game? Something I try to do is shine a light on games that I think are also... Not popular or very well known. Uh, the Spirit Engine 2, Armageddon Empires, Mainframe Defenders, for example, are all amazing games that not very many people have heard of or tried. I often try to get some eyes on them to show folks what's out there and are, are awaiting their time. Bonus points uh, as well, and it will always be the case I earn these, that if I find the game fun to play and think others will like it as well. If it's a new game, though, let's say that I'm going through my Steam backlog and I find a game that I think I like, like Mainframe Defenders. Uh, if, depending, it depends on how long the game is. Mainframe Defenders is a game that you will beat in about, uh, about five or six hours. Uh, well, is that right? Yeah, about five, five to seven hours or so for a playthrough of it. It's a roguelike, you have a squad of, uh, units that you are guiding through a factory or actually on the surface of a motherboard trying to stop either the viruses or uh, rogue corporations from attacking it, uh, your your facilities, and or you're in there to try to disable their defenses. And it's great. Uh, I absolutely, absolutely love it. But I wasn't going to record it when I first played it until at the very least I understand something about the game. For this reason, I tend not to play games completely blind. This game is an exception to that rule, as are games from, uh, generally for Halloween. So I want to understand the gameplay mechanics, which means that I'm going to play through the tutorial if I see a game that has a tutorial. I will generally do that uh, not on screen though, I'll do it off screen. So if I have problems with it, I can take care of all that jank uh, before it ever get anyone else ever sees it. That's why with the Bobby Corporation, I did the tutorial off screen. No one who has seen this game played before wants to watch someone do, do the tutorial. You want to watch them do the first day, then the second day, and every day thereafter. But you don't need to see someone reading all the text on screen. At least that's my, that's my opinion about tutorials. Or if I was to record the tutorial, there would be a skip. Allow, uh, allowed you for it. Yep, and now, right now I'm seeing that this thing is called the Little Prince, where I had seen, I thought it was just called the Giant Mushroom Chunk before. 
I'm also wondering if every single creature has had a, a different name and I never noticed it before. Because the magical girls did. Right? King of the... Uh, Knight of Despair and King of Greed were both called Magical Girl before they got their current names. So, and I'm familiar with the... Oh, King of Greed. Oh, that is King of Greed. The Queen of Hatred. I'm familiar with the fact she is called Magical Girl before she gets her real name after you have studied everything there is to know about her. Uh, anyway, back to... Uh, back to... Like to talk, how long I've played the game before I be, be recorded for a new game. So, after about one to three hours, if a game has held my interest that long, uh, and I loved some various aspects of it, I will probably start recording it. If it looks like the game's going to be about a five or seven hour game, like a roguelike, like let's say uh, similar to, um, what would be a, sim a game it would be similar to? Um... Jupiter Hell, for example, is a roguelike where you get it done in uh, you get it done in about five or six hours or so, right? And so if it looks like it's going to be a roguelike like that, after, I will try to beat the game once or get as far as I can so I understand as much as possible before I record it. Um, otherwise, I will record the game for one to three hours, and if it holds that, my interest for that long, and it's a longer game, that, than like a, a seven hour roguelike, then I'll say, hey, you know what? Maybe this is something I'm going to go ahead and record. And if that's the case, odds are I will record quite a few videos for it. Getting myself a backlog of it, of about eight videos or so, eight or ten videos at least before the first one gets uploaded. Uh, this is because if I find something that changes my mind, I can just not upload any of it. Like if I encounter any bad bugs or glitches with the game. I can just stop recording it at that point. Like, nope, this was a mistake. Uh, wasted my time recording it because of these balance issues or these bugs or glitches that went wrong or this thing I really disliked about the game and I'll stop at that point. Mm. If I'm going to play through a game that I have already recorded for the channel once, odds are I'm going to record it a second time as well. So, there's a few games that... Uh, I come back to every so often. Consuming Shadow, Occult Chronicles, Legacy of the Ancients, the Thief series. It doesn't matter that I have played these before. Uh, I know I'll play through them again, as I really, really like them. And since I'm going to play through them all the way through, why not record it as well? Especially if that was a very popular game for my channel, or seems to be seasonal, as Consuming Shadow and Occult Chronicles are. Time is of the essence when it comes to recording also, because I can only play and record so many games for the channel, and many games that I don't record are done because I'm recording others. Uh, I don't want to upload 10 different games all at the same time. That's too much, I feel. I want to finish games that I start as well, so recording and uploading encourages me to do so, since I'll feel an obligation in that regard. This means if I start a long game like Fell Seal, there will probably be others that I might have recorded, but I won't, since I don't have the time or space for them. And speaking of space, that's an issue too. If a game takes, like, 25 gigs of space to record a single session after editing, then it's just not going to be a game that I record. It will take... It takes too long to upload and process it on YouTube, and too much space on my computer hanging around waiting for me to upload it. Um, there's also the fact that uh, there are some games that just aren't for me at all, and this is where it, co it goes into the... I prefer watching it rather than playing it. I either can't get used to them, in particular, the controls I find very frustrating, or I find that there's balance issues too prevalent or they're too grindy. Uh, I may watch people play these instead, especially if the issues is the controls, and there's some grindy games that I don't mind playing uh, if they're pretty mindless grind and I don't feel the grind that much, because I can put on a podcast or uh, put on some news or something in the background. What well, news? <laughs> uh, put on some reviews or just people talking about random stuff in the background. Uh, as I'm playing the grindy game, because I can pay attention to that instead of really what, focusing on what's going on in the game itself. But uh, one of these games that the controls were just too frustrating for me, as an example, is Examina. Uh, I hate the controls for that game intensely, but others have made the game look amazing, and it's fun for me to watch people play it. Uh, and I really found, uh, I think the game is called Sea Salt, beyond frustrating, so I watched others beat and play that game instead. And it seems like the controls are the biggest factor for me if I'm going to play a game. So, 
that's uh that's most of the reasons I can think of as to why I would record a game versus play it off screen versus um just watch it on YouTube. Quite often for a game I might be interested in, I will watch a YouTuber play it for a little bit. Um I find I prefer YouTubers playing a game to streamers streaming it because I want to focus on the game and not on the person uh, recording it instead. But I'll get an idea of what the game is like and if it, it's something that I will enjoy playing or not. Uh, okay, what's happening, Tim? So, we're advancing the meltdown level. Obviously, to 11. People are busy getting their skill ups. Els left, you are the best person to work with Funeral of Dead Butterflies. Ooh, 51%. Well, Yin doesn't have. Yin has a Kupalath counter of 2 at the moment, so it'll be fine. Assuming we don't get something like the Violet Dusk or uh, Blue Dusk. If such events are things that can happen. Because, you know, we've never seen a blue dawn. So I'm beginning to think that there are some colors that don't exist for certain time periods for this game. So blue dawn probably doesn't exist. Maybe violet dusk and uh, blue dusk don't is exist either. It's been a while since we've seen an amber dusk also. So I'm expecting to get a red or green here. But we did just have our first green, just a few episodes. No, I think we saw a green dust before too, but I had an issue with someone d almost dying or Snow Queen bugging out. And so we, I, we decided to quit early rather than try that dusk. There's Lynn Soul Hacker with her, again, singular uh, experience working with Crumbling Armor for the plus 10 movement speed, plus 10 attack speed. Which is working. Everyone, I need to use the bathroom again, so I will... Again, I use these two restroom. I'll be right back. And I see we have an Amber Dusk showing up. All right. So I remember my thoughts about this, about seeing this. It's my belief that the Amber Dusk is... So the Green Noon is very similar to the Green Dusk. You get... a Green Dusk. It's very similar to the Green Dawn. You get a robot per facility. Somewhere, it materializes somewhere in your department and you have to deal with it. It's stronger. It has more options, but it behaves the same. The, the green, I said the red uh, noon works like the red dawn in a fashion. Uh, it spawns somewhere in your facility and when you kill it, you get the clowns that run around. 
uh, and try to free the, the abnormalities, training their PE boxes and lowering their Kupaloth counters. So I'm guessing that the Orange Dusk works similar to the uh, Orange Dusk. The Amber Dusk works similar to the Amber Dawn and that we get bugs, but they're bigger bugs is my guess and stronger. So I think I'm going... That's that's what's going through my head at this moment. So actually, the first thing that's going through my head is deal with all the alarms. Get rid of them off our containment units. And then we'll defeat the Dusk, and then we can wrap we can wrap it up at that point. Assuming, of course, that we can beat this Dusk. I'm guessing that we get a group of the pill bugs in every single... Well, one per department. So what is that? That's eight groups of them is what we're going to have to deal with. And the little ones, if you don't kill them quick enough, they'll jump to a different hallway. But they don't show up in any rooms, and they don't show up in elevators. So, that's my guess. Now, the purple noon, uh, violet noon, is very different from the violet dawn. Violet dawns appear in hallways, one per department. And if you don't kill them fast enough, they release everything. They lower the cupoloth counters of everything, I think, in that department by one. Or a random... Uh, containment unit by one until they finally kill themselves several seconds later. The Violet Noon drops a giant monolith, obelisk, down on top of everyone in four departments regenerator rooms. Seems four or five of them. And uh, if you don't kill those fast enough, they kill themselves and lower the Kupaloth counter on various uh, containment units and so on. So, I'm I might be wrong about this dusk, but we will see. And I'm beginning probably to move people around into different battle groups to deal with the bugs. We know that the bugs are very quick. They jump back and forth um, and that they do red damage. So it's my guess this will be similar to what we fought before. I think they take extra damage from most things damaging them as well. I think it's less damage to white but uh, increased damage from red and everything else, not, they're not immune to anything either. If we're really lucky, we can watch what the Dusks do at the start and see if I'm right. But we don't have very many clerks left alive in the department. Oh, hello. Let's see if Tillman can tank this all by himself. He should be able to. Good God, look how much damage he does with, with Sensor's weapon. Uh, look who's come to kill Steel. <laughs> yeah, well, we gotta, yep, we gotta do work. Because if I want to fight the Dusk, then we need to advance this to the next Meltdown level. Nothing else to talk about. <laughs> uh, Heisel, I guess we're still going to try to earn your... Oh, you earned the mask at some point, Heisel. I don't remember even seeing this happen on you. Did you always have it? I don't think you did. I think you got it last... No, it couldn't have been last episode. Last episode, we had to be tried the day. I'm farming for that matchstick. There's no reason why we can't try to get that on him, too. It's a different mouth slot, so... Since we're getting the Amber Dusk, and again, I believe it works similarly to the Amber Dawn, we may as well start killing clerks in the information department. I hate killing them. The increased success chance is so useful, but it doesn't matter. We have to do it. They're all going to die anyway, so... It seems like by the time it, we are ever going to reach a midnight, all the clerks in the entire facility should be dead, either by one of the Dusks that kills them all, or through uh, me helping that process with execution bullets. And I'd much rather use the execution bullets to do this. Alright, yep. Gonna, gonna start assembling my combat teams. I'm thinking... Maybe... Th I think I'm thinking three groups will be enough to do it. Yep. 
Lay face of the wall breathing. That's what everyone wants to hear, Tim. <laughs> Someone else should do some work with the little prince. Oh, do I remember who did work with the little prince? I might not, in which case... Oh, there it is. Insight. Okay, so it's safe for us to do work with it with someone and not do, ins uh, not do insight work. Apparently it's going to be you, Oodaloop C. Always, I'm guessing it is. Get my combat teams ready. Of course, Chris Bataille is going to be his very own combat team. Since... We can't have him help anyone else out since his weapon does all that AoE damage. Assigning them to a different control group. Right, anyone who is wearing armor that is not very resistant to red damage and whose hit points are not very good, like below 60, will be sent up to the control room. I can't risk Trimus. He's wearing Teth armor with 1.2 red damage. And if these are WOWs that show up, if we get 8 WOWs that are fast leaping uh, critters, uh, this is going to be really bad for us. Uh, we're not going to be able to, ta to tackle them with anyone wearing red armor. They'll die too quickly. What am I doing with you guys? Oh, really? Another group's just going to be there? You should, you should send one of these groups, Tim, up to the upper layers. Right. Oopsie. Not you. We, we will use Tillman, I think, although I'm going to be kind of nervous doing that. Discord armor deals additional red damage. So it takes additional red damage while wearing it, so we we got to be careful that we don't lose Oodaloop C if we're using Discord to help me fight. And Chris, you're all on your own here. I know we've got to do like four more containment units, but I, I really want to get ready for this first. I think I'm going to triple check to make sure I didn't leave anybody out standing around someplace. Nice. And we unlocked one of the armors for the little prince. Sorry, everyone. Uh, just <laughs> don't know what else to talk about. Uh, we do have plenty of bullets to... Oh, we will have plenty of bullets to shield. Why am I... Why is that group... Okay, that group's going to be combined with the lower one? It is. Okay. That's fine. Is it? I'll probably look over at that group. Oh, hey, and Tira gained the heart from working with Fragments of the Universe. Nice. The heart sticker. Really? Oodaloop C is being moved down here, Tim? Gonna have Oodaloop C help fight? Apparently so.
Sorry. <laughs> Not much to talk about, everyone. I'm just watching myself move all my people. You can tell by the length of this video that uh, there is quite a bit to do when this is going to occur. Oh, right, Lewis. Uh, oh, right, Lewis is the one who has the uh, the reflection. And since he does take increased damage with this cord, I'm not willing to lose to Oodaloop C. So he stays behind with everyone else inside this little room. Yep, and they'll be safe up there. Let's double check to make sure I got everyone out of, out of every hallway and every room again. Nice. Master Survival also got the heart from the Fragment of the Universe. Lots of people are getting that today. Alright, Tim. I think we're ready. I don't see anyone else standing outside, so someone's got to walk in and start this. I am nervous because these things show up everywhere. So, we have to risk someone walking into a containment unit. That they might not, when they leave it, they might not make it. They could immediately be in combat versus a horde of them, but we don't have a choice. We gotta spawn it. Here we go. Not many hit points, 550. That's the same as Scarecrow. Oh God, Seeking Wisdom. Someone got annihilated in that hallway. Chris, we'll have you try this to start. And I think I'm gonna try watching one of them. You guys also beat on that one since you're right there. Let's, we'll see what happens if it turns around and kills us. What's interesting to me is that they all are starting from one side of the containment unit. Instead of just being in the center of it. I'm curious about that. And since they're so big, I'm immediately thinking that these are some sort of gimmick fight. Yeah, they all are starting on the extreme side of a hallway. Here we go! <laughs> Something's happening. Oh, it's it's being stopped or being stunned. Uh, that one's just moving. It, they move really slow, which is not what I thought, and it didn't turn around. Just in case I'm wrong, let's shield these folks and send them in against that one. And I really should shield some of these people. Oh, but they're all they're all wearing WoW gear. Excellent against red and damage. That was easy. That wasn't so bad. But we have a lot of them. Oh, we're gonna watch what happens to her. So that didn't do anything to us, the one we just killed. I think I'm gonna watch what happens to her when she approaches it. Because I'm paranoid uh, about how these things work. Or, or I'm not going to watch that. Instead, I'm just going to watch myself beat this one to a blade pole. 
We have less damage against this one, so this one might just end the hallway. Something's happening. Oh, it spawned little ones, and then it turned around after it did that. Or at least that's what it looks like it did. So my guess is these are like the King of Greed. Only they spawn little ones. So then we need to get behind it. And so much for watching, watching that clerk. We didn't do that at all. all right, let's fight the little bugs. Some of them have definitely turned around. Do I risk killing the big one from the front? I'm not going to do it. Maybe Dia can see what happens if we charge it from the front? Let's have her do that. I'm just going to run her through it. Let's see how much damage it does. And see if we lose her to this. For science! Okay. She, she was endured against it and her shield didn't break. So that's promising. So they don't do the damage the King of Greed does. But there's many of them. So my thoughts are this will not be hard if I have now understood everything of how this works. But just like King of Greed, I need to get behind them if I don't want to lose a bunch of people to running through them. Yeah, go, Dia. Go ahead and kill the little ones. You're not even hitting them, are you? you maybe you are? You are. Let's watch it. Right, so does, it turn, does it turn around again? Or do they do they vanish? It looks like they just go back and forth through the through their hallways. I'm assuming that they will vanish at some point. And they do. Okay. So they're all the king of greed. They moves the big ones move slowly through the hallways. And if you're in front of them, or they pass through you, you take that you take Probably a sizable chunk of red damage if you're not wearing decent armor to protect you from it. The fact that Dia didn't take any, though, she had her shield on it, makes me think they do about 30 points of red. Okay, get it! You guys kill that one. There's no others here, but I can't... I don't really want to run people through the entire... Oh, I guess I do. Want to run people through the entire facility to hunt them down? Where's Chris Batai? Uh, yeah, Chris can kill that one, Tim. He'll get behind it and kill it and nothing else in the hallway. And you guys can kill that one. But all of you clerks are dead. None of you are going to live. So we might as well just execution bullet you all. We've killed one of them so far. So we have seven left is my guess. Let's keep count. So that's two. Six should be left. Chris is doing decent damage to that one by himself, but he's not going to kill it. Just in case it turns around, we're going to shield everyone here. I think it escaped, so we still have six left. Do 
guys down there. Ooh, uh, there's two big ones in that hallway. I guess I'm gonna risk it though and send people up to kill that one. Okay, good. I'm gonna say move them to the elevator instead, Tim. Chris can face tank that one since it's almost dead. Little clerk, you are doomed. You know, even my weakest people could probably do a battle if it shows up near the control room and is going away from them. That one to death. Chris. With well, ice. We'll kill all the ones in that hallway. Well, there's a teth left. Very good, Chris. Thank you. Five left, I think. If if my guess about the numbers are them is I think we killed that one as well, so there's four of them left. Good job, guys. Let's. Oh, uh, we have one. At least one of the record team. Looks like there's two of them down there. Let's pull you out of the hallway at least. This way, if any respawn, you won't all take a bunch of red damage. showing up everyone i don't think we're ready for that so we're gonna probably clear this out and that will do it for us i i'm not ready for a midnight and i'm worried the midnights will work like the violet uh the violet noon and like we'll lose a bunch of people instantly to them sh uh showing up and i want to wait to do them until later Him. You can do this without losing somebody. I know I have faith in you. Oh wow! Everyone just ran through it to kill a teth in front of it. And now the importance of uh the importance of making sure your people don't target whatever they want uh is uh made manifest to me. We cannot let that happen again. So and it damaged, it looked like, it didn't damage all of them, but it damaged quite a few of them when they all ran past its mouth. So our, our agents are kind of dumb that they'll do that. We still have five left, I think, Tim. We really can't rush anyone to, in, in front of them, though. Everyone gets together. Come on. I should probably have that. Actually, ha well, I don't know where I should have them. Just like the King of Greed, we're kind of <sighs> waiting for them to be at the right place and facing the right direction for us to actually take them out. Oh, I'm calling Chris down here. This one of the record teams seems to be down here for a while. So we're going to have Chris come down here to deal with it explicitly. So it reaches the end of the hallway. And then it vanished. Where did it go? Oh, there's one. 
It's by the control team. It could have the control team handle that. Ah, and that one left. Okay. Chris can handle the record team room, Tim. You see everyone else? Yep, everyone else somewhere else. That one is facing. Yep, the right. We can that could can kill that one. We can help. Am I changing my mind? I don't know what I'm doing there. Alright, guys, let's have all the weak people go ahead and and by weak I mean it's just not properly armored. Go ahead and kill this big one. Go go! Really nervous about this though. Well, at least do some damage to it. Because we're taking basically extra damage from the from these creatures because the armor we're wearing. We're also being slowed down when we take damage. So it looks like we're gonna have to kill the Teths instead of focusing on the, the big one. I guess he killed that one. Pull you out, since it's not worth the risk. Four left? Four or three are left. Just over there now? Who do I have who can reach it quickly? Yeah, that, that team can put some damage on it. Set him up there. I guess we'll we'll wait to see what happens when they get a little closer to the door, I guess. None are down here, Tim. None are in the middle layer. None are in this layer. Oh, there is one. I'm sorry. There's something in this layer. Uh, I don't know where to send you guys, though. So you guys are you just going to hang out there? Just going to hang out there. That's fine. Interesting. That one created more of its uh, kin when it spawned, rather than when it reached the end of a hallway. Let's kill it! People are running in front of it again. Please don't run in front of it. Didn't kill it. Or did, did we? Actually, we did kill it, I think. Just barely. Uh, we can... Oh, we have a combat team. Yeah, right there, Tim. Send them around. I think we have three left. Let's go. Let's go, guys. All right, kill it! Or try to. It's already reached the end of the hallway, so it looks like we probably won't be killing it. And it might kill us if it just decides to whirl around. Since it keeps moving away from our rifles, we'll have our rifle guys take out the little ones. Good. Good! We might have two left, I think. One or two left. Oh, maybe we just have te that Teth left. Kill it! Yes! Not bad. Not bad. And I don't think I want to even try the Green Midnight. I should arguably do more work with my abnormalities, but I am worried that we'll spawn it by accident because I won't be paying attention. So we're, we're done. 
Yep, we're, we'll call it quits. This was a successful day. Thank you for watching, everyone, and I'll be back to talk about the end of this day with you guys. And now we have another Dusk under our belt. See you guys in a few seconds. All right, everyone. Oh, man, that was <clears throat> that was fun. Hey, the Amber Dawn's not so bad. Uh, I was a little worried when I saw the giant pill bug. <laughs> I saw how many of them there were. Uh, and then I noticed that they were moving kind of slow. So I thought, okay, maybe it's, these are just really fat slow bugs and they don't do any leaping around like the smaller ones did and maybe they don't uh bite me unless i'm really close to like they just no range attack or something of the sort and sure enough they look like they work like the king of greed so that's that's pretty good uh all the little bugs though around make it so that i can't assign people just to clear the hallway because my people as you saw, might target a little a little pill bug that's further away from the butt of the big pill bug. Uh, and past its mouth, in which case my people will charge past the giant one and get uh, eaten by that big one. But we didn't lose anybody. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take this as a win. And now that's another Dusk Ordeal that we've seen. We could have gone for the green midnight. But I don't think I even want to see it quite yet, because I'm nervous that it will just spawn and annihilate, <laughs> annihilate my, my, uh, uh, my corporation. Can you imagine if, like, the midnight is just what the, what, like, the dusk is, but every single individual, uh, department gets one of those factories? That would be awful. <laughs> that would be awful. Oh man, I wonder what it is though. I guess we'll well we'll find out some later time. Uh, right now, I just want to practice against the dusks. Okay, so not bad. This was a successful day. I at the very end there, I was like, oh, maybe I don't want to assign someone to work with the little prince because oh, if I don't remember how many works I'd done with it before insight, and I don't think I want it escaping yet so we're not so I was like no we won't suffer any LOB point cost here at the very end we'll just end the day with a successful day I'm fine only getting one pseudo armor for it we can get the rest of it uh, the next day so now we're really 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 hoping for an elf let's see if we can get one and if we don't all right that's fine we'll just do Tipperit's core suppression on day 37 and no matter what we're going to unlock Bina's department today. So let's go ahead and start this. If we get an ALF, then we don't do the core suppression today. Instead, we hope we get another ALF tomorrow. And if we do, then we advance to day 41. And we don't do any core suppressions. And then day 41 will be the day we do forever. Because we're going to be doing all the core suppressions on day 42. And then resetting back to day 41. Over and over and over and over again. Let's see what we got. A teardrop fell from the child's dewy eyes. This is not an elf. Still, it didn't matter to him. After all, he was destined to be a big bad wolf, not an elf. This sounds like, again, the big bad wolf from the My Little Pigs story. Or the, uh, possibly Little Red Riding Hood, but the My Little Pigs are what I think of when I think of the big bad wolf. Oh my god! It's Slime Girl. Holy crap, we actually got an elf, and it's Slime Girl. The best elf. <laughs> well, I don't see why we wouldn't take this. I keep calling you A. But I think you and A might have become separate entities now. So this is an interesting statement. This is... You guys ever play Planescape Torment? Like, uh... Was the Nameless One responsible for all the past reincarnations uh, of himself? Because he was a his thoughts were completely different 
when when he respawned at at some points in his millennia a old life and people can change dramatically like after a stroke or something of the sort as their memories and personalities change thanks to uh, well the rearranging and damaging of their brain so we might be very different than the original a was I wonder if that actually impacts the way Angela thinks of us. Maybe she hates us more. Or maybe she likes us more. From the moment you began to have new memories, you both started to walk different paths. I must wonder how the memories separated you from A. Well, even if you two have differences, it's still important for you to witness this place through A's eyes. Okay, so I think what she's saying here is that... Even if I am a completely different personality, even if I'm more ruthless than A, or if I'm a much kinder person than A, she still will show me what A had seen. Right? She, I'm pretty sure she is uploading all of the experiences we are having, as well as all the ones that all our previous incarnations had to some sort of quantum, quantum uh, database somewhere where... All these cycles we've gone through have been saved. And even though we revert time, it doesn't matter. The information's been logged somewhere. And so she can show us this. And that's why we still got to see some of what A had seen. When we were talking with... It was either original Angela that we saw talking about the sky and the grass. Or it was who she was based on. Why do we repeat this eternal cycle, enduring endless suffering? What's at the end of the line? That's a question humanity has asked itself for a long time, Angela, as well. And in the end, no one knows, do they? What kind of world was it that he saw? The answers to these questions are what you must know. However, the choices you make are up to you, not him. As a consequence of those choices, you may lose it all, or you may gain everything. I'm not trying to control you. I just try to support you. That is my role here. I don't know if I agree with that, Angela. I think you want to guide us to the correct decision so that you can get enough PE boxes to become a real girl. <laughs> I think you're tired of being in this corporation, trapped it here for, God, it sounds like thousands of years. And I can only imagine you're tired of this. I'm glad you haven't lost your mind. That's very good, but I don't, uh, I don't know. I don't know. We, we know that, oh, hold on. Plus, I, I have seen many other exes who made it this far and witnessed the innumerable amount of efforts and failures they made. So we are not even the first ex. So it's not like there was a uh, an N before us who tried for a thousand years and then failed. And then Angela destroyed him and made a new one. There's been many of us here too. So maybe there's all these different versions, all these different numbers. And all of us are doing different things with like different personalities and different unique abnormalities. And so we are working with the abnormalities that we are seeing presented with us, to us. But others have other abnormalities that we'll never see that they're working with in an attempt to get to the final day. And because it's a video game, uh, I'm guessing that we we will eventually, if we like start over from day one, be able to make it to the end of the game successfully. This also means that we're not the first X here, obviously. So this means that we could very well fail just like the, all the other X's that have come before us every other X that has come before us has failed assuming that we're not all on different different dimensions and all trying to do this at the same exact time and she's leaping between them somehow or monitoring them all somehow now you are here scrambling over it all and climbing up of course I have kept all their data in my head but it is not my place to share it with you okay so she does remember everything that they did or did not do successfully. Angela, I disagree with this. It is your place to share it with me. <laughs> I 
commander was, hey, to do this, you give me everything that they know so that, uh, so that I know what it is like going forward. Actually, you know what's interesting? So when we sit back to time, we get to keep the quest completion and we get to keep all the information that we unlocked about the abnormalities that we worked with. So I don't see why Angela just can't upload all the information about all our abnormalities that she knows about to us so we know about all of them in advance we have the best chance of winning. I don't know why we need to struggle in order to, for Angela to get the PE boxes she needs. Although we did learn that when people die, humans die, that more energy is generated. So there are other ways to generate these boxes or generate the energy quota required to complete the day. I wonder if our execution bullets are helping in that regard, for example. A machine has its own work to do. Oh, did we say that? That's what you, or A, once said to me. Oh. Oh, Angela, I'm so sorry. Are we going to have your core suppression in the future as well? God. Uh, I, I'm not a fan of treating... I mean, I, I know she's an AI, but if she, if she can think and feel like a normal human, you treat her like a normal human. You don't, you don't insult her like that. Come on. And she's been here for thousands of years, and she's remembered that we said that. A said that to her, the original version of what we were designed around. This is awful. God. So this tells me that she's, that really, really made an impact on her, that statement. I'm imagining she hates us. Oh, Angel, I'm so sorry. Welcome, A. Hello, B. Oh my god, is this Hawkma? Hello? You have the same hair color that Angela has. I missed you dearly. I have been waiting for you ever since the very first day I started working here. This background reminds me of, I think it was, what was the movie? Inception? When you're deep, deep, deep in the dream, that one guy had this, uh, this, like, it was an empty city that was falling apart and crumbling, and it was near a beach, if I recall correctly. Is this, is this a memory that we're having that actually occurred? No. No, 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 no. He's, we're seeing him talk to us now, here, in the corporation. He doesn't look like the old guy that we saw when we unlocked the corporate this area, though. And we know we haven't been the first X to reach day 37. So this would mean that the Sephira don't remember the previous X's. Only Angela remembers the previous X's that have been here. Unless the whole thing is an act and everyone is just lying. But I don't think that's the case. Though it could be. Or is it? Do the other... The other Sephira haven't lied to... But they haven't lied to us, but they do, they can do it if they want to. But we know Angela herself has directly lied about wanting to harm us. She will kill us if it comes down to it, and she get to do to get what she wants. This is also interesting, because uh, if this is Hawkma, it's also B. So this was the gentleman who installed that one time only. You'd be able to see Angela lie to you when you ask her a question. And Angela doesn't like him very much. I wonder if he also said some mean things to her thousands of years ago. Do you remember this ocean? You said that this place is where everything from all rivers and streams will eventually settle. As such, at the lowest layers, everything sinks. What do you think of this heaven, painted laboriously with white, white with plaster? I knew you would come here soon. Please think of it as my welcoming gift to you. I figured that what you longed to see may have been something else than what I have become now. I didn't expect you to look like this, that's true, but I didn't, I wouldn't call that as longed to see. You can look like however you wish, Hakma. 
Time is like a scythe. It relentlessly attempts to trim, divide, and cleave in twain the claps together hands of those you love. Everyone I had loved is now gone, leaving me a tired old man. Well, time also heals all wounds. In addition to creating others, I suppose. Please do not blame yourself. Back then, we were the bright back then were the brightest moments of my life. The only thing I regret to this day is I was too scared. I ran away without keeping my abiding promise to you till the very end. I wonder what that was. We know you're a Sephiroth now, Hakma. So you're a machine. So you were killed or destroyed and then reincarnated as this. Maybe this is Angela's way of getting back at, at you for something. However, you eventually found me and helped me to fulfill my promise here. How can I ever be more thankful than I am right now? Hawkma! Sarcasm, I think. I can't read sarcasm in this sentence, but I'm pretty sure there is some there. You're just too kind to me. Kind to the very end. Are we? We'll see about that when we, we get your course oppression, assuming that we get your course oppression. Mission, the virtue of protection. The growth of each employee here is based upon the four virtues, and such growth is directly applied in reality. I wonder where the limit to them lies. First, fortitude comes from strength, forbearance, and instinctive desire. No one knows that that aspiration will become a power to protect everyone, or a weapon that satisfies one's own green greed. Clear the day with three or more employees whose fortitude is a hundred or, or, or not. <laughs> that would be great if it was a hundred or not, but it's probably a hundred or more is, is my guess. So we already have that. So we're, we'll pass this as long as we finish the day. We're unlocking Bina's team today. How nice to see you again. Oh, Bena? Bena. Bina? Bena? Bina. Must be Ben. Bina. As you can see, I've been placed as the leader of the extraction team. I'm sure we'll meet again soon. And by doing this, that also puts the elf over there near the other elves. So that's, that's great. Man, I may just keep going at this rate to day 42 and hope we get an elf later if we don't get another elf tomorrow. Oh, but you know what I could do? I could also just back up my save game now and guarantee we get another elf tomorrow. Like, if we finish the day, we don't get an elf. All I do is just restore the game to this spot via uh, restoring the backup files. And that way, I don't have to do the revert in-game. I'll do it outside of the game. I just don't know what the odds are that I will get a elf tomorrow. All right, well, oh, and I promised I would read these descriptions if this was like less than an hour and a half. So let me stop here, everyone. And if I've been playing for less than an hour and a half, I will be back to read about the abnormalities we have picked up in uh, the welfare team and disciplinary team. And if I'm playing for more, then we was, I really do want to read them. You know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it anyway. So uh, give me a few seconds to at least save this part off. Go and compress this part down, and then I'll be back to read about the welfare team and this married team's abnormalities. I call them Alf's abnormalities. I'm so glad we got Slime Girl. Oh, that's amazing. I can't wait. I can't wait to work with her. I, I can only imagine it's going to be horrible. <laughs> Based on what Sensor just like, I imagine it's going to be horrible. And we'll have to learn how to fight her, assuming she escapes. Oh, that's something I didn't even consider. There might be an elf that doesn't escape, in which case it doesn't matter if we get two elves or not. Because one of them may be something that we can't put back in the containment unit, okay? Well, we'll at least try to get all this information on her tomorrow. But I'm babbling, let me go and save this off, and I'll be back to read about the display team and welfare team's abnormalities. So, a few seconds, everyone.